right, in this video we're going to show you how to replace the keypad on a Manitowoc ice machine. In a previous video I showed you that we found it to be defective, so we went ahead and ordered the keypad itself. We're going to remove these two screws and this ribbon cable here, and then we're going to basically transplant the electronics into the other keypad housing. Pretty self-explanatory as you can see. It just hooks at the very top. There's really nothing much to this, and I haven't had any of these go bad yet. Generally, when it's under warranty, the factory will only give you the keypad, and I haven't had them provided as a whole. I know I was asked that question once before, so I'll go ahead and address that now. After attaching the two screws, as you may figure, like I said, we'll attach the ribbon cable, snap that into place, then we'll put the back on. The back uh, pretty much is nothing special. It does have a little bit of a silicone uh, seal around the outside edge corners. It uh, helps keep any moisture out of the keypad area as far as the control board, but it by no means is it waterproof. From my experience, the keys have been damaged from pressing them too hard with objects other than what they were designed for, such as a normal fingertip. So we're gonna go ahead and just reattach it to the wiring harness here, date the back. As you can see, it's been a few days ago. I don't know up from down, so once we get that into place, head over to the breaker box. The breaker was defective. It was only wanting to reset on one uh, leg of power. So we've got a new breaker in place already. We're gonna go ahead and flip that on, uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and check our power up. As we get over to the machine, you're gonna notice that we have a little bit of an error here. Uh, they're false codes. If we shut it off and turn it back on, it clears it right out. As you also may remember, we went in and cleared the history before we left. So we're gonna go down there and check the history once again. And you're gonna see that the error that you just seen now was also on the same date that we were doing the work. So here it is 127 at 154. And on my watch there, it says 127, 153. So they're within a couple minutes of each other, which reassures me that it's not a new problem. And it's just something from the power up. So we're gonna go ahead and clear the ear log again. We're gonna double check our uh, temperatures. And then we had to replace this water shield that you see with a new one. I'm gonna go ahead and snap that thing back into place. Nothing special here, it just hooks in the bottom and top corners if you have both hands handy. It's pretty much simple and self-explanatory as I mentioned before, but in this case here, we're putting it in with one at a time. Now in the past, I've had a few issues where these um, trigger mechanisms here, I forget the exact name of it, but basically those things can bow, sometimes they'll get hung up and they won't retract and the machine will lock out on bin full. Here everything looks good, our temperature drop across the coil looks pretty much in line for as quickly as we've just started the machine and everything looks pretty good. This here is an example of what the keypad actually looks like underneath of the cover. I went ahead and destroyed this one knowing that it wasn't needed back for a warranty claim. But uh, what we're pointing out here is the button that's the power key right here. You can see it's smashed down. Uh, it's completely bent in the middle there and you can see the edge corners. Now here on the right hand side is an example of what it should look like. There's where it shouldn't look like. So this top right button is not near as important as the left button. And let's just say, for example, this was a weekend call, Friday, what have you. They're extremely busy. You don't have a keypad to get them by. The machine doesn't want to run. You can literally pull that keypad apart, take a heat gun, heat up the faceplate of it, peel back the cover, pop off the crappy button, put the button that's good over from the right-hand side, and then put it into that place, push it back down, and get the machine back up and running. This is by no means a permanent fix or anything like that, but it does give you a chance possibly to be a hero until you can get the replacement part ordered and get back and get the machine properly repaired. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all my subscribers for watching the video, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Until next time, everybody, we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah.